Okay, so finding boots on the ground. I'm going virtual. I'm uh, I'm in New York City. Um, okay. How do, how does it how does it uh, how do we go about you know like I I couldn't find any um, you know real way to get you know boots on the ground like somebody that I can rely on you know like walking a buy walking a buyer through a seller's house you know trying to arrange the um, you know it, so, it's, I mean here's the first thing um, obviously you're not doing the market in New York City. The, right. are, are you in a market you're familiar with? Did you, did you ever live there? Do you have friends there, family? What, what's going so on? I, I, uh, so just today I found this market that I have a, um, you know, a, f um, a friend of mine, his son moved to, to that part of the, uh, you know, okay. Into, okay. into that state. So that could be pretty cool. Um, so, you know, so I'm thinking of shifting markets, obviously, yeah. based on that. So the first thing you have to define is what is your boots on the ground going to do for you? And you have to clearly define it. And there's there's two there's only really two layers, okay? The first layer is someone who drives by a property and just takes pictures to see if you actually have a deal. You will get deals all the time and then you like get there and the thing needs 100 grand worth of work. You're like, crap, it's not a deal anymore. That's the number one person. The easiest person to find is like an ex-realtor, maybe a BPO person or a simple photographer that's okay taking pictures. And basically you give them an address, they take pictures. If you need to get access on the inside of the house, their only job is just to take pictures and be polite. That's it. That usually pays 50, maybe 70 bucks, depending on what market you're in. And they provide you, they're just there to verify the deal. Hopefully you can use those pictures to help out with some marketing stuff. But remember, you have to sell the contract and not the property. The next mm -hmm. layer is the person that's actually going to help you get a contract signed mm -hmm. or help you walk through cash buyers much more complicated person. Now, you do not want to use another wholesaler from that because they'll typically try to steal your deal or mm -hmm. they're going to be your major competition. <laughs> Sometimes realtors will actually help you out with that because mm. they're licensed. It actually works out well for you, but you need to find a realtor that's not good at being a realtor, but they like to talk to people. And if you can find that person, that's great. That person usually gets a nice spiff when your deal closes. And what's the number going to be? Anywhere from $200 up to $1,000. Now, why you can do a realtor? Because you can actually pay them a commission legally off that deal. If you're going to use any other person, it just has to be considered a marketing fee. Two extremely different types of people. And I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have to use the, the tried and true ways like Facebook, um, use some of the groups. Craigslist is a scary place today, but unfortunately it is the necessary evil to find these types of people. Uh, word of mouth is always one of the best ways, but... Um, the second one has to be someone that either you know or someone that has to just demonstrate talent at times. Or a lot of times the, the latter of the people I just explained used to be the photographer and they're like, no, I can talk to people for you. Um, you're going to go through a lot of people when you do it though. I'm just kind of letting you know. Mm -hmm. There's just no way around it. So, um, And then when you find a good one, just take care of them and, and just keep working through it. But usually you have two distinct people. Um, a lot of times if you get the right person, they'll, they'll gladly do both for you. But the biggest challenge is always having them walk through your cash buyers through the property or getting the seller to sign an agreement. Usually they have to answer three or four questions and just help you get through it. And a lot of times they'll put me on speakerphone and I'll walk them through it. So I have a market where I have to use a translator because they only speak Spanish there. Mm -hmm. And that person walks me through it and they're very good. And they develop a lot of trust. So does that make sense? Understanding the two different divisions of the boots on the ground. Yeah. So uh, first, somebody just getting pictures, and then another person uh, just to do the actual showing, which two hundred to a thousand bucks, depending yeah. on the whatever. Yeah, it something. just depends. Like it, it, it depends on what market you're in. Some of the small markets, mm -hmm. they just they just want to get paid, but you got to take care of me because they're going to run. If you don't, they'll run you under the bus. Because if you find someone like that, they're extremely valuable. Mm. But you deal with, you know, people like they want to go out and open up their own business and do exactly what you do. It, it is what it is. I don't get hurt by it when they do it. But try to find the person that will drive by and kind of take pictures and then help you maybe have a basic conversation with the seller. And then you just so you can get them gift cards. You can Venmo them money. I mean, society's easier than ever to pay people to do that. Remember. That saves you a plane ticket, it saves you a lot of aggravation. And the biggest thing is you need to know if the property description matches up to what the seller told you. And until you get past that, you don't know if you have a deal virtually. Me and Zach have to deal with this challenge all the time. The sooner you can verify the property, the better you can run your business. So start with that person first and then see if they demonstrate the level of trust. And then you can uh, move them up the ladder if you want to do that. It'd be great if you get one person to do everything. Yeah. But that second person is much harder to find. And so if you get a contract like tomorrow, you need to know if you have a deal, you need someone to go out and put eyes on it.
that's the best way to do it. So basically, every time I send them out, I just pay them a set amount or whatever, like an yeah, hourly thing. I think that's the cost of doing business. That's the cost of doing business. I can't tell you how many times I put it under contract, and then the guy gets there and he's like, "There's like no house here." I'm like, "What are you kidding me?" It's like, "Ouch!" You have to do that part of the business. You have to have somebody put eyes on it. And I know a lot of you guys think you can look at like satellite photo and stuff like that. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. Mm. So get creative. You find college students. Everybody's got a uh, app on their phone to take a picture. It's really not that complicated. 50 bucks, maybe 70 is the most I've ever paid to get basic pictures. And it, if you have a nice seller, have them knock on the door and take interior pictures. If not, you got to get somebody in there to help you out to look at the inside. Or keep in mind, if you got a really cooperative seller, you can have them take the pictures for you, mm. but they're not always the best picture takers. And you don't mm -hmm. always, and they, they tend not to take pictures of the most problematic areas of the house. So <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so, make sense. Yeah. And, and how, do, how does it work? So I guess, obviously, how do I recoup that, you know, the cost or somehow that's, that's, you know, I guess part of the hit that I take as opposed to, I can't well, pass listen, it on to the buyer. If you make 10 or 20 grand, like right, you can right. absorb $50 here and there. Like it's not that big of a deal. Right. Okay. And, and listen, if the person, if you're tying in the person, the success of your deal, which you're not supposed to legally do unless they have a license, um, you can only do that. So if two or three deals fall through, they're going to leave you pretty quick. So you got to, sometimes you got to give them a hundred bucks here and there to keep them. Sometimes deals just fall apart for no reasons that you did or your boots on the ground did and just make sure you take care of them. But for the most part, you got to, you got to have eyes in these virtual markets until you really get it dialed in because they'll always give you surprises. And the problem is if you don't put eyes on it, you start sending cash buyers by and you're like, you're wasting all this. It's going to cost you a lot more than 50 or 70 bucks. Right. It's going to cost you weeks, if not months of aggravation and just annoyance. So just get it over with. Someone's got to look at the property. If you have a family member or someone, uh, a loved one in the area, it's even better because they can help you. And that's a person you know you can count on and what they see is like word. And once they take pictures, because I've had sellers send me pictures and then I send somebody out there to look at it night and day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, did you really think I was going to fall for that? <laughs> and I want you to understand this too. When they go and get pictures, you can most likely, if it's in much worse shape, you can usually negotiate the heck out of the price. So that 50 bucks winds up being an investment for you. Maybe you knock five grand off of it and you pay the guy 50 bucks to take the picture. You have to do it. It works. It will work out more times than often. In worst case scenario, they verify you have a great property. Mm. I was just concerned. I was just concerned that if I send out, let's say this person, let's say one time to, to take pictures, the next time to, let's say, get a contract signed and then to walk through sellers, you know, that could add up to, and let's say if I need to work through a couple deals before some deal sticks, then it could ultimately, uh, you know, lose the whole profit if there is, you know, I, know. I don't know. Well, that, that's, I guess that's the, the cost of business. part of virtual. And that's why I tell right. people it takes two to three months to really get your virtual operation off the ground and get it profitable because it takes time. But you, you get like, think about any business. What business could buy houses sight unseen and nobody ever looks at it? Right. It, it's, you're going to get burnt sooner or later and you can't right. afford to do that. Plus, I don't want you getting stuck with a contract that you can't make stick mm. because they didn't represent the property for what it was. So just start with the basics and just keep moving forward. And they're not all going to work out and be prepared for it. And, then minute, ask, and by the mm. way, you never pay them until you get the pictures ever. Mm. They're like, pay yeah. me in advance. You will never see them again. Mm. Can I ask you one other question? Shoot. Um, how does it work with uh, cash buyers wanting to do an inspection on the, let's say, foundation? Um, so listen... If when you get good wholesale deals, they come in, they look at the property, they verify the asset to the contract. A good cash buyer will not beat you up on inspections. Period. Like no, like no, like when I when I buy a house, I was looking at buying whatever in the past, uh -huh. and I always look, you know, wanted to get an inspection on a foundational issue that cannot that that perhaps so I would not be able to see. Put a property under contract, correct? R right. Like I'm looking right. in, in on the you know in, in their perspective, basically. Yeah. Like like would they buy a house without getting an inspection on the foundation? Well, it's, it's not even the foundation. It's just usually the whole property. So the whole property altogether. My recommendation yeah. is get the strongest um, inspection thing you can when you buy a property hmm. because you never know. Like, like buyers, I mean, buyers lie, sellers lie, everybody lies. So mm -hmm. we're not all experts on it, but like, I'm just going to tell you, if you get a good wholesale deal, you don't have to go get a professional inspection company. If you're buying at a deep discount, do you really care if there's a crack in the drywall? You just want to make sure the foundation is solid and the roof and the walls are solid mm. and the electrical system 
and the HAVE Act, however it is. How you want to do that, sometimes people bring in GCs, but for the most part, remember you're selling your contract. So if you left a big enough discount, the cash buyer can deal with the little glitches that come with the property. Now, things I watch for when I see big stains in the roof, when doors won't open and I see huge cracks in place on me, that's huge red flag stuff. And when I see that, I'll go into a 60 or 90 day inspection period because I got to get some big professionals out there to figure it out. Here's the best part is, Mm -hmm. I'm not doing the inspections. I let my cash buyers do it mm -hmm. when it's major. And by the way, whenever I have a major foundation issue, I never buy them. There's just, they're too much of a mess to fix. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just way too costly. Hundreds of thousands of dollars a lot of times. So right, right. you're okay. getting a deep enough discount. You should be able to look. You want to know if you have a bad roof, you can see when it was built bad. And then when, if you can't open doors, you got problems. I don't care where you are in the United States. If a door doesn't open freely, take a second look and start looking for cracks all around the door. That means the house is settling sinking, leaning. I just saw a deal in San Francisco, a building is leaning 26 inches to the left and they spent like $19 million trying to put rods to compensate it for it. And I saw a report the other day, they moved another four inches. Mm -hmm. Major, major downtown building. I'm just like, guys, once the foundation goes bad, it usually never gets better. And it's from the stuff I've seen. I've been offered Property's 20 cents on the dollar on foundation. And my guy goes, You'll go broke trying to fix this property. I'm like, Never mind. I don't touch foundation stuff. Mm. So, what's the rule? If you can stick a quarter in it, you might have an issue, a major issue. Mm. So, we have settling um, stress cracks in the center roof lines of all Florida properties. Like that stuff doesn't freak me out. So, you find out what the norm is in your market. And then when there's something crazy and it sticks out, put the house under contract, but go, Listen, I'm going to need a two to three month inspection period because something ain't right with that house and I got to find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're like, well, they'll tell you, you, go, yeah, the last three contracts fell out. I'm like, dude, just tell me the truth. What's going on with the house? <laughs> and remember, if it's a big enough problem where nobody else could fix, heed the warning. I don't want you to enter into contracts and like have foundation issues are a no-go for me in wholesaling. 20, 30 cents on the dollar if you don't buy it that because it's going to take a lot of money to fix that foundation. So okay. make makes sense? sense? Yes, sir. You got it, Ari. Just start with the basics on getting the boots on the ground and okay. don't worry about worst case scenario. Just try to get a standard inspection. The minimum you should always get is minimum is two weeks. And honestly, that's tight when you start in this business. I tell everyone to go for 30 days and in a perfect world, you get 90 days, but most sellers won't go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, Thank bud. you so much, Rick. I'll I appreciate you. your time.